What is up, guys? Welcome to EGA's playoff hype video. I am joined by Starstro and You Know Me. Say hello, guys. Hey. Hey, guys. <laughs> so I'm not going to do too much. Let's just hop right into the questions. Uh, so tell me a little bit how your guys' team was formed and how you got to like the roster you guys have today. Um, so originally, um, Shino talked to me about wanting to do a, an academy team uh, and having like kind of like 10 men roster, but not really because two different leagues. Um, and I was on Enigmatic uh, Gaming last season. Um, and Schlid was with us for the um, run in Chosen Esports. Um, so he had us to uh, form EGA. Um, and then we did some tryouts. We picked up uh, our top laner, Soulforged, first, and then Taran right after that, who's our ADC. Um, then we all kind of found Irish together. Um, Schlid stepped down for a bit because of some life stuff. Um, so we picked up Carter, who turned out to be plat in preseason. So we went back to Schlid for a bit. And then partway through the season, um, Schlid just uh, wasn't really doing it for us. So we found TK, and he's popped off ever since. No flame, though, right? Um, yeah, you got to say yeah, no, flame. No, no flame. No flame. No flame. Okay. No flame. Yeah, he's gold now, though, so congrats. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Big milestone. Um, so tell me from your perspective, uh, you have a little bit of a different take because obviously that's how the team was formed before you even got here. But from your perspective, how do you find the team and um, how are you like recruited kind of from your way of looking at it? Uh, you know me. Uh, yeah, so I was looking on the League of Legends Reddit and saw Risen Esports and I was like, OK, some amateur competitive league sounds pretty fun. Um, and so I was actually just looking at posts, looking for subs in Risen, um, and then that's where I was found by Irish Shy. Um, he asked me to join the team. Um, hopped in, regular season, going pretty well since then, and yeah, going well. All right, well, seems like, so you kind of, it wasn't really more of a tryout for you, because maybe, sh did they already know how you played? Or was it more, uh, or did we you had have a one. Phase? We had one day of tryouts. I think we played like maybe one one single game, and there was one other guy they were looking at. Um, I don't know. Maybe Star has more info on that, but I, they got uh, back to me the same night. Okay. Yeah, we had um, two different. Um, we had two different uh, tryouts. There was you know me, and I don't remember the other guy. Uh, but you know me just seemed to fit the style more because he plays. A uh, similar style to our original mid laner, um, Carter, um, where it's kind of um, that very carry heavy style, which is something that Schlid didn't have. He is more of a supportive mid laner, was the best way to put it. So, like, it, it's fine to be a supportive mid laner. It just didn't quite fit our style. And, you know, we did, and we liked that style again. So, we went with him. Yeah, being a mid, I mean, I know there's definitely. Um, the more like assassin heavier players and the people that just need like kind of just get kills. Uh, I'm honestly, I would consider myself a little bit of a hybrid. I definitely play a lot of champions that are, uh, you some have a lot of utility, right? And that can be super valuable. But like you said, there's certain things that you need. Like maybe your particular team needed another carry for that because right. you can only have so many carries. It's like playing basketball with like five Steph Curry's. Like that's not gonna work. Like they can all score, sure, but there there are other things you need from other particular players in the yeah you want to support exactly. and cast right exactly Absolutely. yeah yeah exactly all right let's move on that's a great transition let's move on to the next question so how do you guys um feel about how the regular season went um and then would you like change anything if if not like are you if you're not happy with it would you change anything um obviously besides just like win every game <laughs> right. you know what i mean um for me i'm pretty happy with how it went overall um I think we did have kind of a rough spot with um in the mid season. Uh but with our actual like five man roster that we've gotten to now, um we haven't actually dropped a single game. Uh we dropped one game to Exile when we did not have TK with us. But besides that, like with this roster, um I've been pretty happy with how the season's gone. Anything from you? Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, I had to miss one game just due to IRL stuff, and T 
came really close to dropping one of our early games versus ARA. Um, so we do meet in quarters. But other than that, the regular season was it's going pretty smoothly for sure. Um, now the team's early game was too much trouble. So, Did you guys happen, because I asked this because I know that like AOL, for instance, had like two losses all season. Did you guys happen to play them with this full roster or not? Yes, we did. We um, did. We had an off-stream game. Um, or we kind of stomped them. It was like 25 minutes or something. It went really well, actually. So that was was heartening. Oh, yeah, it's very good. I, I honestly just didn't remember if who else that loss was to, so that, that explains why you guys haven't lost with the starting roster. That's very good. Um, all right, well, I mean, other than maybe it sounds like uh, basically just coming to this starting roster sooner, getting to that point where you guys feel like more finalized yeah. now. But after a certain point, you guys are pretty happy, which you can't honestly complain too much if your starting roster has yet to lose, or even if you lost, like, one game. I mean, it's that's, right. you know, I mean, it's best of ones. Anybody can win a best of one. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go ahead and move into the next question. So who's making the calls in games? Kind of like, because we can't really tell, obviously, from the outside looking in perspective, like who your shot caller is, but also who's just uh, leading you guys to success. Like who you guys think is a big contributor to success. Now that could be in game or out of game. Um, they could just be making sure everybody's on time for practices or he's kind of, or like they were setting up the roster, like maybe whatever you would attribute to being like valuable for the team. Uh, go ahead. Just tell me uh, who you think is leading you guys to success. Um, as far as like a team manager kind of role, Irish definitely takes that, uh, our support player. He kind of schedules everything, makes sure people know what's going on. Um, so he's invaluable in that respect. Like team kind of fall apart without him, I think. Um, and I'd say in game, it's kind of a split between me and star, uh, for the most part, like star, obviously is a jungle. He has a lot of info on like early game rotations where he wants to be on the map, etc. Um, yeah. Um, most of our, like, macro though like once it uh like i kind of have a lot of say in like the early game because i'm a jungler but once it comes to that like mid and late game macro it kind of switches over towards tk um a little bit of soul as well um and it yeah um most of our calls just come from a little bit from me in the early game and then mostly just tk okay yeah it's just it's nice to kind of hear that from like because again, you, when you're spectating teams or games, when you're watching the games, you obviously have no freaking idea what the communications like or what who is like the kind of the X factors that are in the game. Like you mentioned, your uh, support doing a lot of the things outside of game too. So I just like to hear those things. Um, let's go ahead and just go to the next question. Uh, so the, internally, who would you consider your MVP for the regular season? Um, again, this can doesn't have to necessarily be just performance based, like somebody popping off every game. If it's something other X factors that aren't just the kill death ratios and the CS and all that stuff. Um, who would you consider your MVP for your team? Mm. I'd have to either give it to TK or Soul. Um, they've both, well, TK, ever since he's come on, has been kind of that pop off player. And obviously, he's like a big part of our shot calling, as I mentioned too. Um, Stop it. <laughs> um, and then on the other side, um, we have Soul, who um, is often a very team player with how he plays. Like, um, I know some of his onstage performances haven't been as good, like in the early season. Um, but he's like shown more of himself as a player, I think, as the season's gone on. Where, like, he was in scrims, he was constantly like a big part of our wins, and then. Like, a couple of the early season games, like, he had a couple of bad KDAs, but did, like, enough. And then lately, it's been, like, he's been another person popping off as well. He's been a pretty consistent overall player. Um, he's He has games where he'll have solo good, good solo performances, um, but he'll also have games where he can just play around the team and stuff. And he kind of keeps us focused in comms a lot of times, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say Soul Forge is like a really good. I can get really aggressive with the calls I make sometimes, um, and often I don't have the best idea of what's going on on the map as a whole. So Soul's a really good person to like check me and provide that second uh, opinion when we need you're, it in mid like him. Yeah, you're kind of like the the gas on the calls, and he's like the break a little bit. Um, where like um, a lot of your calls are very aggressive, but um, occasionally we need that like break to like. Um, like most of your calls are good, but occasionally we just kind of need that break in solo accent that a lot. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Uh, I would definitely say 
There's definitely that structure on a lot of teams. I've definitely been on teams in the past where I'm the break because I just think some people make very ambitious calls. Um, and I really am the kind of player that likes the, like, the 80-20 where it's like 80% of the time it's going to work out for you or and then 20% of the time something might go wrong or whatever. Some people like, make the 50-50 calls, and I, <laughs> that's just not my style. So I totally uh, understand that perspective, and you kind of need that, honestly. It's nice to have like those two kind of shot callers that can kind of play off of each other a little bit. So. Um, so now let's go ahead and get into your playoff uh, conversation here. So you guys play Active Rush Academy, and you brought it up before. You had like the rough early game against them um, in the season. What's your guys thinking going into this game, uh, the series? Um, do you guys super optimistic? How do you think it will turn out? Just take away from there. Um, I'm personally pretty optimistic. Um, I think a lot of the things that happened. It in actually both times we faced them were very correctable. Um, the first time uh, we faced them, we had uh, Schlid, and I think that was a very winnable game, anyways. Um, like, even though we didn't have the starting five we have now, um, there was like one screwed up team fight that kind of ended up being the nail in the coffin. Um, and then I think this time there was just a couple um, misplays here and there. There was like, I think that was the game where. Um, I just, like, didn't smite the camp or ult for some reason on Jarvan and, like, died because of it, and it, like, changed the fight, and it kind of messed up our early game a little bit. Um, but I think, overall, I think they're very correctable things, and this was still, like, I think, like, our second or third game together um, as that, like, five-man roster. Um, so I'm pretty confident that we can beat them. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with uh, that for the most part. Um, again, they were one of our more challenging games in the early season, or at least my early part of the season. Yeah. But um, I think we definitely come together as a team a lot since then, and I think if we play up the early game a bit, uh, we should be able to take Is it best of three or best of five? I feel like it's it's best, best of three. And best of three, okay. Finals is best of five. Ever, even semis gotcha. is best of three, I believe. Dude, we just got to make sure they uh, they start the objectives, because I can only steal... Uh... Steal uh, objectives I can't you're, secure. You're giving away strats, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's. I try to make these questions a little bit where you guys don't have to give me too much detail of like your strategy going into the game because obviously nobody wants to reveal too much. Um, obviously, everybody's will hopefully be out by the time their game's played, so you could still see theirs, which I will tell you that they felt pretty confident coming into the series as well. But they did, I mean, they have had changes even since I think the time you guys played them. I believe they changed their top laner and... Maybe mid? I don't know. They've definitely had gone through their changes as well. But I think I think you guys will be a really close even match. And I think it's actually one of the... I, I've told, uh, um, for instance, I interviewed the Amumus or, uh, previous to your guys' yesterday. And their series is like the only series I think people aren't really interested in watching. Because it's like the one series where I think the teams are more separated. But as far as Iron Bronze Silver Gold goes, I think both matchups are, should be pretty good. Um, as long as Kill War Wild Brigade shows up and plays like they have at some points in the season. Um, yeah. But I think the Active Rush Academy and the Ign the EGA uh, matchup is definitely one that's going to be pretty hyped. I mean, I know I'll be watching because it is, again, my bias, my org. But uh, I'm really excited for that matchup. I think it'll be really fun to watch. So what is your guys' predictions? You guys said you're both confident. What is your guys' predictions? 2-1, uh, 2-0, two, two uh, what do you guys think going in? Um, feel free to flame. Feel free to flame. For, for, personally, I'm feeling, I'm kind of feeling a two zero. I think okay. there's maybe a two one if we like do something like stupid the second game. Like if we kind of like stomp the first game and then want to like we just kind of int our draft the second game or something like that. And maybe we lose game two. But I think we on an even draft. I think we never lose against them. Okay. Yeah, I think it's pretty comfortable 2-0. Um, okay. I think they had the best game they probably could have hoped for the first time they played us when I was in the lineup, and they, they couldn't close that one down. So I think we take it. Okay. Um, what is... Are you worried about the best of threes being... like? Are you, are you actually more encouraged by best of threes? Or are you kind of like worried about the transition because we haven't seen any team play best of threes yet so that could definitely be a big factor in like how they adapt in the in, in the best of three and in the future drafts like so game one maybe they come out with some spicy comp and it's about how you respond right so is that something you guys are looking forward to or are you, are you guys like because you guys obviously had success with best of ones is that concerning at all going into the best of threes um 
for me, I don't think it's super concerning because um, for like scrims and stuff, we tend to have those as like uh, three blocks or best of threes. So yeah. they're playing all three games out and stuff like that. So we're comfortable in a series environment um, instead of a best of one environment. Um, I don't think we actually had any scrims where it was just best of one. So um, we're already pretty well prepared for being able to adapt in the middle of a series, okay. I think. Yeah, I think uh, best of three lends itself to our team um, pretty heavily. Uh, the games I'm most worried about with us is if the early game doesn't go too well. Um, and I think the more opportunities we have to just put ourselves on even footing, taking it in the mid and late game, we can close out against most teams. So. Um, I think I think best of one is the chance where we get so behind we don't we don't take it and someone gotcha. could upset. But in the best of three, we uh, the skill shows through and we, we take the games. So you think a little bit that your style, your team style of playing, which is playing the mid and late game team fights and objectives, um, should be more consistent. So that's why playing more games should help. Correct? That's kind of the gist I'm getting. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, and just yeah, yeah let's go with that. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. Man. That's definitely what I'd probably answer if I was answering for my team too. So. All right, final question for you guys. Um, where do you see your team finishing in playoffs? Now, I asked this question. I mean, I, most people, I hope, have the optimis, optimism to say first. But, you, I mean, you could be super realistic if you think, like, this man, this team we're really going to struggle against or something. Um, I'm just leaving it open in that. I just kind of want to hear, give everybody a chance to, talk, like, say where their team's going to finish, and we'll see how the results turn out. Um, for me, I'd have to say anything besides first would be disappointing. Okay. Um there's only one team in the league that we didn't at least go one for one with, which was um, Exile, um, and we didn't have TK in either of those games. Um, and just the fact that we've found so much success with this five-man roster um, means that like actually losing a series would be our first loss, and I think it would be kind of disappointing for our first loss to be in playoffs yeah. with that roster. Yeah, I got to agree with Star. Um, I I don't know. I haven't power ranked like the whole ISB yeah. ABC league, but um, I definitely put us in number one, and I think we can take the playoffs. If we don't, I think we'll definitely be disappointed. Do you think there's any teams that? Um, so since we both have, we have two answers of number one here. Do you think there is it Exile? Is that the team that you guys are putting as closest to you to that you would like be the most wanting to avoid that matchup if possible or does it matter to you guys or do you think you're just clearly a step above everyone you know what i mean that's what i'm trying to gauge like how close the gap do you think there is um i think that i want to definitely face exile solely for the fact that we did lose twice to them without this roster so i want to see like they're the one unknown factor for us i feel like that we don't know if they're um better than the uh roster that we have just because it just hasn't faced them but i feel like every other roster um we pretty much like hard stomped most of our games um like kill Whale brigade sad boys uh aol i think active rush was the only one that we didn't hard stomp with this roster so it's kind of just i want to face exile solely for the fact that they're the only team that could pose a threat to us so actually getting to prove that we can uh beat them before they get eliminated would be nice like i don't want to have them get upset somewhere along the line and uh not face us at all uh yeah i'd agree with star I'd, I'd definitely like to play exile um i'd also say that we probably have the harder side of the bracket i think kwb and sad are looking the weakest coming in playoffs so I think uh, probably all the deciding games are going to be on our side of the bracket as far as who wins this this playoffs. I will say, uh, as far as side of the bracket goes, really you're only locked into playing at Active Rush Academy. You could end up again, I believe, it depends on who wins the, the third oh, and sixth right. seed because it's based sure. on seeding. So um, you still could end up getting the easier matchup, um, at least from your perspective. Um, That's right. I've, I've, I've kind of been giving that game to Sad Boys in my head, but I suppose technically anyone can win. Yeah, and I, I definitely think at least Killer Way Brigade has a chance. I definitely wouldn't count them completely out. Um, I would definitely not be shocked if they were two, if they only lost 2-1. So the fact that it's even close enough for me to say that, I think definitely plays itself to not call them out quite just yet, especially right. anything can happen. That's fair. 
Um, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you for joining me so very much. Um, you guys can check them out. I believe you guys play on Saturday, correct? Uh, yeah. Yes. All right. Well, make sure to tune in. That's definitely going to be a really hype game. Uh, but this has been Rutledge with your hype video for Ignatic, Ignatic Academy. Sorry about that. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. See ya. Thanks.